rigid lithium batteries. So, um, give you a little bit of history, uh, and then I'll go over what I did to uh, get my battery to take a charge again. Uh, the history was I purchased that screw gun uh, about four years ago. I uh, used it for a remodel project in my home. Um, then it sat for about two and went to go use it again uh, earlier this year. And uh, this battery that it came with, which is the first gen lithium, doesn't have the level gauge. It's just the uh, smaller uh, amp hour. And uh, I went to go charge it and it wouldn't take a charge. Put it in the drill, wouldn't do anything. Put it in the bag, said, forget it, I'll run to the store. I'll pick up a new one to get me by for now. Um, now these are the only rigid batteries I own. This is the only rigid tool I own. Um, I personally have Milwaukee, uh, and I use that in the field often. That's my set. Um, I actually have two of these sets along with four batteries, and I haven't had an issue with any of these batteries, and I'm using them uh, daily. Um, but this is my first issue with uh, with a lithium battery. So uh, for uh, cordless tools. Now where I came up with this idea to fix this issue was a while back my son's RC Toys, uh, which has lithium batteries, uh, had a, wouldn't take a charge, something similar, and you could buy a, uh, a balanced charger for them. And uh, I decided to just do it myself, take the battery apart and uh, try to dump it and balance it um, and give it a, a rapid charge for each cell, and, uh, and it worked. And uh, my son got to play with his toy for quite a bit longer after that before we end up purchasing a new battery. But long story short, what these are known for is not evenly charging each cell. Um, they're not balanced. So, and you could tell uh, what the voltages are by using a simple multimeter. Um, and if you don't know what any of this stuff is that's here in front of me, you probably shouldn't be even this far as taking the battery apart. I'm not gonna go over how to take the battery apart. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you probably shouldn't be doing this, to be honest with you. Um, this can be a bit tricky and you want to be somewhat experienced with tools and electricity. Um, those are two important things. So as you take a meter reading across each of these cells, you'll get a specific voltage. Now I think these were rated at 3.3 or somewhere around there um, to give you your 18 volts, right, because these are all wired uh, in series. And then a double battery like this will be two sets of these wired in parallel. So, so five of these cells wired in series wired to another set in parallel that are another five, giving you your 18 volts but double the storage essentially. So there's um, a little bit of explanation of the cells. Um, when I first took a meter reading off of these, I was getting over three volts on all of these, uh, except for this one, I was getting 0.5. And then I was around the 4 mark on this one, which I thought was odd. Um, so what I did was is I set up my uh, trusty China Freight uh, cheese grater that went bad on me a long time ago. Um, the switch stopped working, uh, the meter stopped working. So what I did is internally rewired it to just go to the heating element. Um, and that puts approximately a 100 amp charge at 12, or a 100 amp uh, 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 drain on uh, at 12 volts so that'll change in the very different depending on what voltage you put through this uh, element it'll uh, continue to drain whatever you put on it DC all the way down to zero volts so it's great for dumping things so I often use this just for dumping batteries um, so what I did was is I hooked that up to the over uh, charged cell uh, and uh, I clipped it on from this plastic on to here to here. Now this might not work if you have a center cell that's bad. And you can always use alligator clips or find another way to dump it. You could use an LED light that runs through um, uh, various voltages, but um, there's different ways you could do it. But I chose this way to dump this cell. As I was dumping it, I then took my trusty car charger, um, set it to uh, six volts, which is actually still on because I just got done doing this. Uh, about an hour ago, and um, once I set that to 6 volts, I took a meter reading on that, it was putting out approximately 9 volts, so yeah, that's a bit of high voltage for one cell, so um, what I did is I would just tap it to the negative, to negative, positive, to positive, um, and give it a quick uh, charge, and now this would heat up the batteries really quick, meanwhile I'm discharging this one, um, you know, bump charging this one, so then it, it heated up, I 
disconnected everything, tested voltages. I went up over one volt now on this one, and I was down in the three up threes on this one. So I'm like, all right, I'm getting somewhere. Um, let it cool down, did it again. Um, eventually, I, I repeated, rinse and repeated until I had every cell at even voltage. Um, so I have them all at 3.4 uh, is where I ended off. Um, put it on the charger, uh, gave it a full charge, uh, put it in the screw gun, dumped it completely, taped the screw gun uh, trigger, and uh, came back, put it on another for another charge, and it's taken another charge. Now the batteries are a little warm um, because I just got done dumping them and charging them again. Uh, but it worked for me. Um, I figured I'd share this with somebody else. Um, you know, I, this was a dead battery that I probably was going to throw away or buy new cells for. Um, so I figured, what, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And, uh, um, you know, it might last a week, it might last five years, I don't know yet. Um, but I know I at least got it to take a charge gun, um, where it wouldn't do anything before it was a good pay weight. Um, or a brick, you could throw it through somebody's window, you know. But other than that, uh, so far my experience with rigid tools, since this being the only rigid tool I've owned, um, you know, I was not happy that a brand new battery, because it sat, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, that one cell uh, drained itself. I, I don't know. Um, but uh, so far I'm not impressed with rigid tools. Uh, now, I did do a bit of research online, found out that Milwaukee and Rigid are actually made in the same, uh, and I could be wrong on this, because I don't, you know, I'm not a French model, but... Um, they're saying that uh, Milwaukee and Rigid are made in the same uh, plant, and uh, the molds are different, but a lot of the internals are identical to one another. Milwaukee sell for a little bit less, Rigid come with a lifetime warranty and cost you a little bit more. Um, you know, if that's true, I, I don't know. Um, but so far I've been very happy with Milwaukee tools, and I went from a full DeWalt set to a Milwaukee uh, about two years back, because um, I had enough issues with DeWalt. And so far, I've been very pleased with the Milwaukee. Um, every tool is powerful. Uh, the Sawzall, by far, is one one of the best I've owned. But um, not getting into the tools too much. But that's my personal opinion. I'm sure I opened a can of worms with that, and there'll be a huge debate in the comments um, about which tool is better than what. But all right, so I'll show you that that drill still works. I'm going to put you in my vice here and uh, I'll pop that battery in. And, uh, that it at least now turns on that drill, which it definitely did not do before. So, it's still not fully charged, but let's give it a shot here. Sounds good. Right yeah, back to charging again. The positive negative, the way I'll go over how I found that, um, you know, when you put your meter on the battery, if it's uh, reading, you know, your three volts, but you see a minus sign, well, then, you know, you got reverse polarity. So if you originally had it hooked negative to here, positive to here, um, and you saw minus three volts on your meter, well, you know it's reversed that. You know, so this would be the positive, that would be the negative. And I just went down the line, and this is the way they were wired anyway. Um, but uh, I did check every one for positive side and negative side, um, and uh, labeled it just so as I was doing my different tests and uh, dumping it on my, because this is steel, so when you set this down, you know, you want to make sure you set it on something insulated, because uh, those tabs on the other side are live, those are going to be, you know, whatever voltage your battery charges at that point, so you go and set that on something metal, you're just essentially draining it, um, and dead shorten it, so, you know, whatever you do your testing on, you want to make sure you have it on something insulated. I so have a rubber mouse pad um, that uh, I used, but um, again, hope this helps somebody. And, uh, it worked for me, so have a good one.